Hey everyone, I wanted to make a video to address a couple of questions that I've been seeing a lot of lately um, about uh, forges in the blacksmith or the bladesmith shop. I, I see constantly uh, people out there asking questions like, what forge should I buy? Um, how hard is it to build my own forge? Um, how many burners do I need? Should I use forced air? Should I use uh, Venturi burners? Um, should I just skip all that and use coal um, or coke? And um, so anyway, I just wanted to talk just a minute about forges in my shop and uh, tell you why I chose to build my forges and uh, what the advantages and disadvantages might be of these uh, types of forges. So I, I have two main forges here in the shop. One is a small single burner forge. It is, um, it is eight inches by 12 inches with a double layer of kale wool insulation coated with rigidizer and Mizzou castable refractory and um, this is run by a Ron Rail style Venturi burner. Um, and this is the forge that I have been using um, since I started in about 99, uh, the year 2000, somewhere around there. I think that's when we built these forges. Um, a friend of mine and I uh, built two of these and uh, I think we're both still using them. So, um, and this is, this is my number one daily driver so to speak when it comes to forges uh, i use this little forge more than any other simply because um, for one it takes very little gas to run this forge relatively speaking it gets really hot and it gets there pretty quick um, i just use uh, fire brick as as kind of like doors and i can move those back and forth um, i have this adjustable tool rack so that when I'm putting longer pieces of steel in there to work, I can use this, I can adjust this back and forth to hold my work. I have the same thing here on my larger forge. Um, and, but, but anyway, th this is the forge that I use um, the most often. Uh, I have timed it, uh, I've put a stopwatch on it. I can come out here uh, like it is now, cold, and, and I can be forging on a piece of steel uh, around five minutes. And so to me, the convenience factor for that forge is very, very high. And um, I like the small form factor. I can pick this little uh, forge up and take it and demonstrate with it. Uh, and because it's a Venturi burner driven forge, it requires no electricity. All I have to have is a propane tank. Um, so anyway, this little 8x12 forge is my favorite little forge. I've been using it for a long time and I will probably be using it for a long time to come. Now this uh, big three burner monstrosity here is uh, a forge that I built strictly for my time on Forged in Fire. Um, I needed a way to evenly heat you know, a sword shaped or a sword length piece of material uh, end to end. And so I needed something that was fairly long uh, that I wouldn't have to be moving that steel in and out and in and out and in and out and getting uh, hot and cold spots. And so I used this forge primarily on the show strictly just to, uh, to get the sword up to an even heat for the quench. Uh, I did not forge the sword in this big forge. I forged the sword in the little one. Um, another thing about this little forge I didn't mention was on the back there's a there's a hole so that I can pass material all the way through so you can work fairly large pieces of material in this small forge because it has that pass through but um, uh, I don't use this three burner very very often um, uh, a friend of mine had the body uh, welded up and built for me it is a phenomenally stout uh, forge. It's like a uh, quarter inch thick steel. Um, it is super, super strong and I've got a little over two inches. I think I have two and a half inches or so, maybe three inches of cable in here 
uh, kind of compressed back and then it's coated with uh, Mizzou refractory as well um, and I have I have angle iron on the bottom in the uh, on the on the front of the forge so I can put these fire bricks in and slide those back and forth as doors um, so anyway both of my forges are venturi burner driven and what what that means is the the burner itself does not have any electrical pieces like I talked about a minute there's no fan uh, what happens is there's a there's a small copper pipe that runs across the top of these burners with a tiny pinhole in it and the propane is fed into these pipes and that pinhole allows the propane to be shot straight down the the burner throat or the burner tube and when that propane gets into the forge uh, chamber and is lit the heat that is generated pulls cooler air through the top of the burner and that creates a venturi cycle a venturi burner and the hotter it gets the more air it pulls and so you can increase the rate of burn or the heat in the forge by increasing the amount of gas that you give it and so that's where the regulator on the tank comes in um, both of these forges use the same kind of regulator like a 0 to 30 psi high pressure propane regulator um, but that's it uh, there like i said there's no other there's no other parts there's not a squirrel cage fan or or any other kind of uh, mechanical or fan uh, needed to run it um, so that's a big advantage the, the disadvantage to a venturi style forge is that it's loud you know when you when you turn these on and that venturi effect happens you get a pretty loud roar and you can't really listen to music in the shop you, you can't hear yourself think sometimes it gets really loud um, the other disadvantage to um, to gas forges um, like this is the dragon's breath effect that comes out of these can really heat a shop up really quick and in the summertime that is just not fun um, so that's a big advantage of using coal and I'm, I'm not sure if you can see but both of my propane forges are sitting on top of a coal forge with a really nice laurel machine and foundry um, fire pot and a, a, a nice centaur forge blower and a super nice coal forge I have just found that for me um, with my time being at a premium uh, I would like to get to forging heat as soon as possible and uh, you know the gas forges allow me just to come out here fire them up and get to forging whereas a coal forge takes a, a little bit more management um, now I will say Coal forges allow you to use and forge uh, larger odd shaped pieces of material. So there's a limit to the size of material that I can put in my small forge. And there's a limit obviously in the larger forge. But with a coal forge being an open platform like that, you can move a piece of material around however you need it. And so I would say if you're going to be working with um, like ornamental iron or larger weird shaped pieces of material then a coal or coke forge is probably more advantageous than a, uh, a propane forge uh, the other advantage of a coal forge over propane is that coal allows you to heat a very specific part of your material so with a coal forge if you just need to heat just this part of the bar you can stick that in the coal and just really heat up just that small section whereas with a propane forge if I stick this bar in here and pass it through um, instead of getting maybe a two or three inch section of material hot I'm gonna get about an eight inch section of material hot and so uh, in that regard you have to do more controlled cooling um, to work specific heated areas uh, in a in a propane forge but for a beginner blacksmith or a beginner bladesmith I highly recommend a small single burner propane forge um, it is quite inexpensive to build it's not really it's not rocket science to build these things 
It's not uh, super difficult. It doesn't really require a lot of welding. I hear that a lot, that people say, oh, I don't know how to weld or I don't have access to a welder. Look, we didn't know how to weld either or we didn't have access to welders when, when we built these almost 20 years ago now. We, we had these taken to a welding shop. You know, we took a piece of pipe to a welding shop and said, can you cut this pipe in half? Uh, can you torch cut a hole on the side? Can you weld this little piece of material on right here? Um, and it was not expensive at all. It was, it was very reasonable to have somebody do that. And so for those of you that are thinking about building your own forge, uh, if you ask around, I'm sure you can either find a welding shop or a fabricator shop that would be willing to do that for you. If not a friend or uh, somebody that you know that can help you uh, get the small amount of welding that that needs to be done, uh, accomplished to build a forge. Um, so um, anyway, that, that th those are my thoughts on gas forges and coal forges and what I like in a forge. Um, like I said, this small one burner, eight inch by 12 inch forge is just, it's what I use almost all the time. And I think people might be surprised to learn um, just how small of an area or small of an inner diameter you really need to do um, a pretty large amount of work. So um, now if you're, if you're a, an industrial blacksmithing shop or a full-time blacksmith shop where you're working on railings and, and uh, a lot bigger kind of items, then, then you're probably going to use a, a bigger forge like this. But somebody that's just in their in their spare time wanting to make a few knives or, or get started with uh, introductory blacksmithing items, you know, I would just say you don't need a big three burner um, monstrosity of a forge. You know, for one, it's gonna cost you a lot more to run in propane. Uh, it's more expensive to build. And, um, and you, it's, you know, if you're only heating a small amount of metal, it's kind of wasteful, you know, and so, Anyway, I would say if you're thinking about building a big three burner or four burner forge or you know multi burner forge, really give it thought and 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 see if that's what you need to do. But um, anyway, I'll um, I'll add another video at the end of this clip where I just talk a little bit closer in depth about the individual features of each of these forges. But if you have any questions about gas forges, how to build them, um, or uh, how to go about uh, finding parts for these burners. Um, shoot me a message below and I'll do my best to answer. So thanks for watching. All right, here's just a little closer look at my forges. Again, this is what's called a Ron Rail style burner. That's uh, R-O-N-R-E-I-L. If you Google that, you'll find the Abana page with all that information about it. Uh, the burner itself is all standard plumbing parts, you off the shelf parts from a hardware store. Really the only, the only thing that you have to do is you have to uh, pop a hole in this piece of uh, brass uh, pipe nipple that goes through this reducer bell here. And all I did was just drill a hole in my drill press so that this could go through. And then um, you can either tack weld this together or put a set screw in there and hold that together. Uh, onto the bigger forge, it's the same kind of setup. I have three of the Ron Rail burners. They're just plumbed using this copper pipe to a single valve that then runs down to a zero to 30 PSI regulator that goes into a standard propane tank. And uh, right now I'm running my little eight by 12 forge off of this big 100 pound propane tank. And you know, it'll, it'll run for a long time. It'll, it'll be another couple of months before I have to go and get propane again. Um, just because it's, it's pretty efficient, you know, and for what I do, I mean, I even, I even do these fairly large three and a half, four pound hammer billets in this small forge. So um, anyway, those are my forges. Again, if you have any other questions about them, just shoot me a message below. Thanks.